All right, everyone, we start off today playing a little bit of a game. Well, not really a game, just an interesting proposal. I did this in 2016 and in 2020 with regards to the presidential field, although in 2020, on the Republican side, it was Trump. Uh, there was nobody else. Uh, you can look at the candidates, and here's how I chose to analyze them. And I was right in 2016 with regards to the primary results and in 2020. So we'll try it again. We'll, we'll see how it works. And, of course, uh, the fields could grow. Uh, they could shrink at any time. You know, a couple of also rands will probably drop before the end of the year just because they won't have enough money. You put yourself out there, you're hoping to get a couple of big investors or enough of the little grassroots support that you, you have an actual campaign. That doesn't always pan out. We see Marianne Williamson last week lost her campaign manager and the deputy campaign manager. She's going through some tough times. Now she has to compete with Cornell West, of course. Even Odd says he beats her in a one-to-one -one matchup among leftoids anyway. The analysis is this. Think of all the different candidates, of which there are now quite a few, and think about whether you'd cast them in a role as a U.S. president. And this is the believability test. This optics has a lot to do with the way the public votes. It's not all about issues or partisan politics. Sometimes it's appearance, the person's stature, uh, the way they appear, their gender plays a role in that, physically speaking. Um, their, their height, their weight, uh, their body language, things like that. Their voice as well. We'll get into RFK Jr. as well uh, in this video. Think about what kind of president, if you were going to cast them at all, you would cast them in a role as. Is it believable, not believable, is it good, bad, etc. For Joe Biden, uh, yeah, we can cast him as president. He's literally the sitting steward of the United States, if not necessarily the legit president. Uh, he doesn't make his own decisions and is demented. I wouldn't cast him off as a good president, though. I would cast him off as what we, he observably is, which is the bumbler. He's the bumbling old... Yeah, he, he represents a dead ideology that's still clinging to the last vestiges of, of uh, relic-like relevance, and that's Joe Biden. I know how he governs because I can see it. So he's, he's believable in that role. So he gets a pass. Not necessarily the kind of president you want, but you would, be, you would put him in the film. It's just he would be making old man mistakes, and, pro and probably you would cast him as the president that's led from the shadows like a puppet by moneyed interests. RFK Jr., he looks the part. As far as age, he's got the Kennedy name. All of that is good. He's got a lot of positive marks to him. The one thing that disqualifies him entirely, I hate to tell you, is his voice. Have you heard RFK Jr. speak? Doesn't matter what he's saying. He's incapable of delivering a charismatic speech. Charisma is completely off the table for him through no fault of his own. I'm not criticizing the man, but it's like if a person were five feet tall, uh, they also would be very unlikely to be elected president based on that fact alone. Their ideology and so forth would not matter if their candidate towers over them. It's simple optics. People are basically hominids. So they do judge each other on, on those sort of topical things. Also, I would say the ability to speak is slightly more important than the ability to be tall. Uh, again, through no fault of their own. Uh, if you're going to be making speeches all of the time and conducting diplomacy with other people who have to have long conversations with you. So RFK Jr. does not get a pass. Um, I, you, you wouldn't really, I, because of the voice, unfortunately, I can't think. I mean, you could cast him off as... Uh, the last vestige of the Kennedy, you know, dynasty or something like that, who vainly seeks the position and fails. You put, might put him in a political movie, but he's the one that loses because of some personal defect, not of uh, not of his own uh, accord. Marion Williamson, is she believable? What kind of president would you cast her off as? I think I would, uh, actually. I would cast her off as the completely nutjob, out-of-touch president who ends up getting involved in some sort of uh, major diplomatic squabble, has no clue what she's doing, and other people have to bail her out. That's ultimately what I would cast her. So she gets a partial pass, but again, it's not the kind of president that you necessarily want. On to the GOL. Well, we'll do Cora West, too. What would I cast him as? He's the person who gets into the presidency and then gets shot down by the courts over and over because everything he wants to do is stupid and unconstitutional. And he wrecks the economy. You know, it'd be a funny... You could cast him in a comedy movie, actually. Crazy leftoid, woke activist, you know, black exploitationist gets into the White House and proceeds to completely lose his shit and ends up getting removed from office or something like that. That's possible. Donald Trump. Well, again, uh, he's a technical incumbent. He's already been in the role, so he automatically passes because he's already been president. 
we can cast him in that role. He's the maverick. Uh, he's the one that sort of marches to the beat of his own fucking drama, ignores the standing rules for the most part, causing ire among some people and causing great joy among others. Very polarizing figure. As opposed to Biden, less polarizing, just bumbling and senile and, and boring in every capacity. Trump is the crazy dude who you don't know exactly what he's going to say next, and so people hang on his every word. Might be a reason why he's not on Twitter yet. He's waiting till the general election to really peel the can of worms open and unleash the, the Kraken again. Uh, but we can cast him as a president. He's believable because he's already been there. Um, just like Biden, uh, when he ran originally, he had been VP. That gave him the believability when he was running as well. In 2020, it was almost a foregone conclusion, of course. Matching him against Bernie Sanders, it's kind of a no-brainer. What about DeSantis? I would cast DeSantis as a presidential contender, but again, there is one thing holding him back, and that's physiognomy. Ron DeSantis is about five foot eight. Uh, that is rather short for an American male. Uh, again, if he were on a debate stage with Trump, who's 6'2", possibly 6'3", we're not 100% sure. That depends on what paperwork you're looking at. Um, it, it would be a problem, I think. Um, and others have this problem. They're like, Jeb didn't have the problem. He's like 6'1". Uh, he wasn't believe he he was non-believable for other reasons. He was he was the dynastic. I'm going to start a war, but I'm more cuddly than my brother. Uh, presidential role, anyway. Uh, I, yeah, I would DeSantis would be believable. Uh, he would pass the believability test. He's well spoken enough. His views are are within line enough. You would cast him off as potentially the contender that is trying to be the knockoff light version of an existing campaign. But that's if you're a Trump fan, so you know you probably don't like that fact. Um, if you're a DeSantis fan, you ignore this or don't even believe it. Yeah, yeah, he would be conceived of as believable. Um, and that really rounds it out because I'm looking at the rest of the downfield for the GOP, and most of these people I wouldn't cast at all. Asa Hutchinson, you, you might cast him as the president that starts a nuclear war. Nikki Haley would be about the same. She starts a nuclear war, but she also does it with a little bit of sass and pizzazz. Vivek Ramaswamy is, you know, the, just the, the weirdo, if you can call him that. I agree with some of his views, especially on the censorship issue, but uh, the colloquial perception is more, he's weird and, and out there, um, almost like a, a Ron Paul sort of thing, minus aspects of the libertarianism or so. And so, yeah, you could conceive of him. I don't know about Elder and the others, like Chris Christie. I wouldn't cast him as a presidential contender in a, in a serious movie, maybe a comedy. It'd be like a Three Stooges slapstick. Uh, Chris Christie <laughs> would be the slapstick president, so he's not going to make it. Mike Pence is believable. Um, for what little it's worth, he was VP. It's just he was the VP that people... He was largely absent, then towards the end he burned every bridge with the people that would have supported a presidential run, and it's not entirely clear, other than waiting for the possibility that Trump drops dead or is prevented from running by an act of Congress, Mike Pence and all the other also-rans, there's no clear reason why they would even be there. Um, so that really rounds out the field. You've got certain people who pass the believability test. There are four of them in the GOP field and two of them in the Dem field. Uh, and Cornell West is an outlier, independent candidate. Yeah, it's just what kind of movie do you want to watch? Do you want a comedy? Do you want a serious political movie, you know, where the president's doing a good job and trying, trying to do what's right? Or do you want one where they're corrupt and evil? It's like Hillary Clinton. I compared her to Dolores Umbridge back in the 2016 election. I said, look, deep inside, that's what you, you mind uh, perceives her as being. You'd cast her as a president. She's been in the White House before, but you'd cast her as the evil president. She's the evil queen-style president who starts a conflict and kills a bunch of people just to prove she's one of the boys. She's the, she's the one that throws plates at her staff's head and, and allegedly, you know, bottles of Chardonnay sometimes uh, and stuff like that. So it's believable. But the people negatively receive the believability. So it's not just about whether the role would be believable. It's also about what form that role would take. That's about all. Peace out.